Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Noemi Combe, and I am a Minerva Fellow at the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics and the Sciences. My research interests gravitate around Frobenius structures, operads, deformation theory, and their applications. Today, in this presentation, I will talk about a discovery a discovery of a bridge relating two very important domains of mathematics, pure algebraic geometry and the domain of statistics and probabilities. Until now, these two domains evolved quite independently and unaware of the strong bridge connecting them. Naturally, this leads to unexplored paths in mathematics and beautiful research problems. I am going to talk about this bridge, which is given by Frobenius manifolds. So Frobenius manifolds arose in the process of axiomatization of quantum field theory. They were introduced by de Broven. Frobenius manifolds are, as the name says, manifolds therefore locally Euclidean spaces, but which are special. They are equipped with a multiplication operation on the tangent sheaf. Moreover, there are like two very important properties, one which is called associativity and one which is called potentiality. To have a Frobenius manifold, you need a rank three tensor, which is usually denoted A, and also a metric, denoted G. The associativity tells you that there is a strong relation between the rank 3 tensor, the metric, the multiplication, and obviously an associativity prop property. As for potentiality, it tells you that there is a strong relationship between your rank 3 tensor and a potential function. Obviously, it can happen that we do not wish to have a metric in our context. And therefore, there has been a new notion which was introduced, the F-manifold. It is a version of Frobenius manifolds which does not require a metric. This is the F manifold introduced by Hertling and Manin. So to have um, an F manifold, you need three things. I have outlined this in blue on this slide. You need a multiplication, which is commutative, and associative. And then you need an even symmetric pairing. And thirdly, most important of all, you have the F identity, relying on Poisson tensor. So, and this is all what you need for an F manifold. If you wish to go to the Frobenius manifold outlined in red, you need your metric, you need your even symmetric tensor of rank 3, A, and the two relations which I have just mentioned about associativity and potentiality. And here you have all the ingredients for a Frobenius manifold. The last condition in the Frobenius manifold corresponds to the WDVV equation within the graph verlinde verlinde equation, which is another version, another way of stating things for the Frobenius manifold context. So now that I have introduced the definition, it is natural to ask, for examples, have you ever seen a Frobenius manifold in the mathematical world? So, I'll state three main classes, which are very famous, and I'll associate them 
to a very famous notion, roughly speaking. The first class is called quantum cohomology. This is about cohomology ring of a projective variety or a symplectic manifold. And this is strongly related to gromov witten invariance. So that's the first class. A second class is the class of cytomanifolds. You have a moduli space of unfoldings of singularities, isolated singularities, on a hypersurface. And this is related to landau ginzburg models. And the third one, equally important, is the moduli space of solutions to morer carton equations in the context of the baranikov konsevich theory. And this is now related to the batalin bukovsky algebra. So, we have the story of a fascinating tetralogy appearing in algebraic geometry. All these objects are deeply, deeply intertwined by mathematical versions of the mirror symmetry problem, as I have outlined on the diagram. So this was until last year. Last year, there was a great breakthrough. In a joint work with Yuri Manin, we proved that this list is not exhaustive, and in particular, that there exists a fourth class of Frobenius manifolds, but not any kind of Frobenius manifold. This is the Frobenius manifold of statistical manifolds, coming from statistics and probabilities. Very unexpected, very surprising. And so this force for being as manifold is given by a space of probability distributions. It plays a central role in geometry of information, for example, and in machine learning, and also in decision theory. A central role there. However, what we show is that this statistic object is very, very interesting on the side of algebraic geometry. And in particular, this is endowed with a paracomplex geometry. So, let's make a summary. So on my slide here, you have a perspective the state of the art on Frobenius manifolds. On the left, you have quantum cohomology. On the right, you have Gerson Haber, Batalin Vilkovsky algebra. On yellow, in yellow, you have cyto manifold and the fourth, statistical manifolds. The quantum cohomology is equipped with a symplectic geometry. As for cytomanifolds, well, it is, for example, a space of complex polynomials. So it's complex geometry. And the third one is real or complex geometry. But so here we can say that each of these Frobenius manifolds are very different, have their own kind of geometry and own algebraic properties. So, let me talk a bit more about statistical manifolds. So, we showed that they have a structure of an F-manifold, but also of a Frobenius manifold, because being an F-manifold does not imply that you have a Frobenius manifold. But the converse 
being a Frobenius manifold implies that you are a F manifold. So we have shown both. It is at the same time an F manifold and a Frobenius manifold. On the other side, investigating paracomplex geometry is very interesting. So the classical Euclidean axioms tell you that two non-parallel lines intersect in one unique point. This axiom is different here. Two non-parallel lines intersect at least in one point. So this is a fundamental difference. And also, statistical manifolds are projective manifolds. A lot of projective geometry appearing there. So this is from the geometric side. On a more algebraic side, the situation goes as follows. Statistical manifolds are dual to a section of a cone of measures, bounded variation, and this cone is not a random cone. It is one of the five Winberg cones. And these cones are known to be in bijection with Jordan algebras and Prelie algebras. Therefore, we have a strong algebraic component appearing there, in particular relying on spin factor algebras. And finally, we have related these objects which appeared in decision theory to all this geometric work. So this is an overview about statistical manifolds. Now it is an obvious question, a natural question, to ask for more bridges. Are there any relations between statistical manifolds and the three other Frobenius manifolds? The answer is yes. There is a bridge. There is a bridge from statistical manifolds to cytomanifolds. And this can be proved using Hessian geometry. On the other side, in a different paper, we have proved a very interesting bridge between quantum cohomology and statistical manifolds through an analog of gromov witten invariance. So we introduce an analog of gromov witten invariance, which we call statistical gromov witten invariance. And this object has two meanings. One geometric, very like its original version. So it tells you about intersections of paracomplex curves on one side. On the other side, it has a meaning in machine learning. It will tell you whether your system succeeded in learning or failed. So these are the bridges, the actual bridges between these four Frobenius manifolds. I would like to take this opportunity of talking about Frobenius manifolds to mention other works that I've done on Frobenius manifolds. And a different facet was the cytomanifold. So a cytomanifold, for example, you can see it as the space of complex polynomials in degree d in one variable. And this is associated well, in bijection to configuration space of marked points on the complex plane. To give a picture of configuration spaces, you can imagine entering a room, an empty room, where you have D flies flying around. The flies correspond to marked points, and the room correspond to an Euclidean space. You can take any dimension of the Euclidean space you wish. And configuration spaces are through the quotient by a group, PSL2C, 
related to moduli spaces of genus zero curves with marked points. So I have been investigating this configuration space under the motivation of solving Bergeron's conjecture from 2009. Bergeron's conjecture asks whether it is possible or not to have a cell decomposition of the configuration space or moduli space of genus zero curves with marked points indexed where each cell is indexed by a given graph. And this given graph I call it a Gauss schizo, a Gauss graph, because it was introduced by Gauss. And this question is very natural, because in the 80s there was a cell decomposition of the moduli space of genus G curves with marked points given by dessin d'enfant, graph index dessin d'enfant. So each cell is indexed by a dessin. Here, since Gauss graphs are a bit more general than dessin, it is natural to ask whether it is possible to have a cell decomposition indexed by Gauss graphs. So my result concerning this is that, well, there exists a goresky first in decomposition. And this work enters in a more arithmetic research program related to Groth and Teichmuller theory, as I have shown on the slide. This is related to problems of understanding the mysterious absolute Galois group with rational numbers and giving a geometric interpretation. Going back to the initial question of how many Frobenius manifolds are there really? Well, this question is under consideration right now. And I can tell you that there are more than we think. Many thanks.